All right. Welcome. It is uh it is Monday night. It is nine o'clock. That means it is time for Monday night Perry. And uh absolutely uh starting starting this stream on a little bit of a, a different note than usual. Uh my uh my kayfabe uncle, my pretend uncle, Uncle Sid, Psycho Sid to some, Sid Justice to others, Sid Vicious to even more. Uh Sid Udy from Arkansas, uh, has, uh, passed away. Wrestling legend, uh, you know, he, uh, he was WWE champion, WCW champion, uh, did it all. Main evented WrestleMania. He did everything. He had a run in ECW that was unlike any other, doing squash matches almost exclusively. Kind of the dream in a lot of ways. And, uh, yeah, there's, you know, he, he was an imperfect person, but that's because he was human. Bobby Gilbert in the chat. Yes, RIP Uncle Sid, indeed. Um, so uh, I'm, uh, yeah, uh, threw out my plans for the stream tonight and decided we'd do a, uh, a little tribute to Uncle Sid. We'd open up uh, Old Reliable here, WWF No Mercy, and we would go ahead in our third creation here. I'm going to put him right, right underneath me as so we're right next to each other. It's going to be uh, going to be Uncle Sid. You know, uh, he's uh, he was a colorful character in wrestling. No doubt about it. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, it's so weird. Like, uh, I just, uh, you know, there were a lot of things I foresaw today, and this was not one of them. You know, I, uh, I actually went over to, uh, to work out. What do I even call him here? Do I call him Uncle Sid? Do I call him Sid Vicious? Do I call him Psycho Sid? Sid Justice? Like, a hard to even pick um i think i'm gonna just i'm gonna leave it as sid vicious that's the name the name we share is the vicious part uh of course he was uh my in my mind my kayfabe uncle um for a very brief period he had a twitter long ago since then someone's had a fake twitter that was sort of doing their own version of sid but it wasn't him uh for the very brief period where he was online he always uh he got a he got a kick out of it when I tagged him and stuff. He would he would respond with a little fist bump and uh, at one point he made some joke to me about like I'll see you at the family reunion. You know we we uh, he he seemed to get it. Um, let's see, will I be able to fit Uncle Sid in here? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna see if we can do it. Tyler from NH. Thank you. Thank you for your condolences. I actually received so many like messages from uh, fans and wrestlers today, all like, you know, kind of uh, uh, sending condolences for my loss, which felt a little unearned since, you know, I can I can say that I, I did not, you know, I did not know Sid personally. We'd had a few interactions on the Internet before he kind of became a uh, Internet recluse um, and they were friendly interactions. Um, he didn't seem to mind that I did the, uh, <laughs> his, his promos were crazy. Bobby, Bobby writing some quotes from one of his promos in the chat there. His promos were crazy. He was out of his mind. It was amazing. So much fun. Let's see. And for his alias, I'm going to put psycho. Um, but yeah, you know, really like genuinely was a big fan even as a kid. Um, when I started wrestling, uh, my size hadn't really been. I don't know, shit, cry baby. <laughs> um, I, I really can't, uh, I, I can't really articulate it, but like when I was new in wrestling, my size hadn't really been impressed upon me. Um, so I never played up to my size. Now let's see, Sid was a shoot 6'9", but was often billed at 6'10". I think we give him the, the benefit of the doubt and make him make him 6'10". Yeah, uh, so depending on when you saw WWE write it, sometimes it had the P, sometimes it didn't. So he was Psycho, S-Y-C-H-O, and sometimes it was P-S-Y-C-H-O. Uh, really depends on when. The English major in me has to put the P in that word. I don't know why. I, I, it's, I know it's not actually important, and I should have done this before I uh, before I got started here. But I am gonna I'm gonna pull up his uh, his wiki over here and just real quick uh, get his uh, some of his stats in front of me. 
three set 317 my my word uncle Sid big man making him look like himself in this shouldn't be that hard to do I think it's gonna go relatively quick the move set will be a little longer <laughs> Bobby Gilbert getting 2k18 just so he can play his Sid hey I don't blame you, man. I uh, I kind of hope he gets into the Hall of Fame this year. Um, it sucks that you know they will have waited till he passed, but there's nothing to do about that now. Um, just because I'd love to see the video package, I'd love to see like who they bring in to put him. Like it would have to be probably Sean that inducted him um, because that was uh, you know one of his biggest. One of the people who pushed for him the most in the industry and someone who he had his most notable matches with. Forgive me having a little uh, having a little tea out of my uh, my Disneyland Pizza Planet mug here. And uh, sitting here with a little inspiration in person. I got my uh, my Sid Bendham hanging out with me for this stream. And uh, long as I'm long as I'm talking about it, I got my uh, I'm wearing my PVV rules the world shirt that is a parody of an old WCW Sid shirt. Yeah, really uh, wanted wanted to be in the right mood for this. Um, I'm not gonna worry about his music for now. They're not gonna really have much that's gonna you know his music was so iconic. They're not gonna have much that's gonna feel like it. I'm not gonna worry about his Tron. All right, appearance. Now, he is definitely not skinny. He is uh, the epitome of a big jacked boy, but he wasn't thick. I wouldn't describe him as thick. I think this is too thick. Like he's gotta be one of these, this one or this one. And he had abs, he had abs you could see. So we're gonna, we're gonna put him there. And he always had a pretty good tan going. So I think that's gonna be the one. Yeah, every, well, no, that's way too dark. That's, uh, well, mm, mm, I'm going to hem and haw over. I think this is the one. All right. Let's see. I'm watching Sid squash matches on Twitter. Now I'm watching him versus Shawn Michaels from Survivor Series 96. Man, uh, I, that Survivor Series match was amazing. That's the one in the MSG, right? That's the one where the, uh, the crowd turns on Shawn Michaels, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Or is Survivor Series where Shawn won the belt back? I, I can't remember now. I'm pretty sure that's the one where Sid won the belt, right? No spoilers. Not spo and if you're only partway through it, I don't want to spoil it for you. I mean, it was 30 years ago, so I don't know. I don't know how much spoiling there is to do at that point. And let's see. Head shape. He, has, he had, a, he had a, a pretty notable dome on him. Not a wide jaw, though. Kind of a more of a chiseled jaw in his in his youth. This is kind of a Sid head, kind of a. And we'll see if we can if we can find that kind of slightly quaffed, uh, permed up mullet. I don't know. Are we making mullet Sid? Or are we are we making '96 Sid with no mullet? Or are we making slightly early? I, I feel like mullet Sid is the look. And then as far as face goes. You know, we can we can try to find one where the guy's screaming or something because he was always kind of, you know, ah, and like giving the fist bumps. We'll see. Joey Nails is here. Thank you for your condolences, my friend. Joey Nails in the house. Let's see, we got some notable, recognizable faces here. It's going to be hard to find just the right one because we don't get to cover anything up with facial hair later because he... He was clean shaven throughout his career. I kind of think this might actually work from a distance. Something about that scowl and kind of plain face. Like, let me see if I can line it up. What do we think? Is that uh, close enough, we think, for the face? We're going to have to fix the hair for sure. All right. And here's, here's where this is going to get difficult. All right. Let's see if we can turn him a little. No, no, it's got to be, uh, that's, that's like Vince. Oh boy, we might, we might not have the options we need here. This might, this could get complicated. Uh, that one, um, boy, I'm, I, this is going to be, this is going to be tricky. Because I remember the hair in this not being, yeah, that's, his hair was curly, but it wasn't that big. 
Wasn't braided. Yeah, I think the face is about as good as we can do. Oh, Joey Nails throw, throwing up the tribute for Uncle Sid. Let's go. Yeah, the hair is definitely oh, curly hair. Oh, that might be Sid. I think that might be it. That's got. I think that's going to be the one. Yeah, if this wasn't so obviously braids, this would be okay from mullet Sid, maybe. We got some mohawks and ponytails and sort of a Scotty Too Hotty thing going there. I think we're going to have to go with the uh, the curly. And boy, Sid was uh yeah, okay. We're starting to get we're starting to get somewhere now. It's not it's not going to be exact. Ooh, I think this is the one. Right? He had sort of a deep yellow. It wasn't platinum. Yeah. Hmm. We might have to we have might have to pick a different head shape. That head's looking a little small. Let's see if anything we do with the head shape fixes this hair. Oh yeah, okay. It's going to reshape the hair. Oh, that might that might be a little bit. Ah, the chin is too wide. That's closer. Mm. Ooh, maybe uh, a little little sharp and pointy, I don't know. I don't know. I, this one, I think this is the one. I think this is probably the one. I did. I uh, I lost the MPW title this weekend. I was uh, I was as surprised as anybody. Uh, Joey Nails knows a little bit of the behind the scenes on that. In fact, uh, the person he was, you know, Joey Nails, in a lot of ways, sabotaged me by going off to another show and taking uh, taking Jason Maverick with him. But we won't get into the behind the scenes uh, stories too much. Uh, I did. I lost. I lost the belt to uh, Wesley Pipes, who uh, he cheated. He cheated like five different ways to win the belt from me. Uh, there was powder thrown. There was a ref that was knocked out twice in a row. Uh, there was a run-in by a former opponent, and uh, in the end, I got hit in the head with a belt as a second ref came out and counted the pin. It took like the combined efforts of like four people to to have me lose that championship. But there will be a rematch. Uh, I don't have the confirmed date yet, but there will be a rematch up there. So we'll see. We'll see. Yep, I, uh, I lost my MPW championship on Saturday. And then Sunday I went down to uh, Retro World Expo in Hartford. And I became the first, the first challenger for CPA's Blitzkrieg Bedlam Championship. And I did not win. CPA also took me down. Uh, it was quite a match. I think we went like 20 minutes. Uh, he took a parry-go-round, but I wasn't looking carefully enough, so he landed too close to the ropes, was able to get his foot on the ropes. Um, you know, it was just uh, it was a tough, tough weekend, tough weekend. But I had, I had two great matches that I'm very proud of. Worked very hard. All right, no caps. Okay, ring attire. Ring attire is easy. We're just looking plain and simple. We need trunks. One single color trunks that we're going to make black. Nothing with any designs. Nothing with any lines. Just plain, simple trunks. So it was a simple man in that regard. Looked for the Clipper City Rumble, October 19th. Where's the Clipper City Rumble? Is that, uh, is that APW? Do, 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 do. Am I, uh, do I need to look at my calendar and see if I'm booked then? I mean, the dates are ticking by down there. Oh, I didn't update my dates, so they're showing a show that already happened. Guys, I, I'm behind my skis today. Had to, had to get out to East Hampton and go do leg day with Rip and Delmi. First thing they told me when I came through the door, I, I popped in. Oh, APW. Hey, good for you, Joey Nails. Good. You and Jason Maverick breaking out. I told Rip about that when I got to the gym today, and he was psyched. He was very happy to hear that you guys were down there doing something outside of Maine, getting more places. So Uncle Ripper strongly approves. Uh, let's see. Oct yeah, okay. Oh, I'm not booked. I might have to see if I can throw myself into that rumble and... Uh, Wreak some havoc on old Joey Nails. All right, nothing on the upper body because, again, Sid's a simple guy. Um, but, yeah, first thing they told me when I came through uh, came through the door today was, uh, 
you know, hey, did you, uh, did, did, you know, or I, I, I walked through the door. I was like, hey, guys. And Delmi goes, oh, no, he's in a good mood. He doesn't know. And they told me Uncle Sid had passed. Um, let's see. So I got, if I'm using this as a reference, Sid does the sleeve on one arm, which uh, keen observers will notice. I also do a sleeve on one arm. It appears that it is his left arm. So let's find a simple, there's an elbow pad. Is there like an, ooh, now that's got a design on it. Okay, that's what we want. We want the simple, simple sleeve, black and black. And I've definitely seen a bunch of pictures where Sid has them on both arms. Although I'm looking now and I, I see some reference photos. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop over here and pop open a reference picture real quick. And then I'm gonna bring it over to show. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna slide it into frame here. Yeah, if we look here, he's got it on one arm and it looks like white wrist tape, I think is what we're going with. He's wearing two on the one you're watching, okay. Well, I'm gonna stay, right now I've got this one picture up. I know there's a, there's a few pictures I'm seeing here where he's got the one. I think I'm gonna do that just cause it's kinda similar to me. I do the same thing. So I, I kinda like that we have that in common. All right, and then we need uh, we need wristbands, but the wristbands are gonna be white, white, white. Uh, you know what? Did they have them where they look like tape? Yeah, that's probably more like what he had going. Let's see, what are these? Nah, the taped is the one. Okay, we want the white. There we go. Yeah, you know what? It's starting to look a little more like Sid already. All right, all right. See, no, uh, we already we already took care of the elbow pad, knee pad. Uh, he has just the plain, simple, uh, the black. Looks like the trace knee pads, as far as I can tell. Your sort of basic, uh, you know, kind of the first knee pad everyone buys. Yeah, well, even that might be it. I don't know. Should I should I keep looking at reference pictures and see? Uh, you know what, Tyler from NH, you're watching him right now. Do his knee pads look like this with the opening in the back, the simple trace knee pad, or did they look more closed up like a uh, sleeve like that? I'm gonna let you be the reference. I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm gonna let you tell me what to do. And for now, I'm gonna go put his boots on because I know what he uses for boots. He uses the same boots I use, and in fact, when I ordered them, I specifically referred to them as the Sid boots. Those have a design. We just need nice, yeah, that's looking like it. Nice, big, tall boots. Well, remember 09 as a possibility. No, not tall enough, not tall enough. Ooh, actually, we take these and turn that one part black. And I think that's, that's looking pretty good because those are tall. Tyler, you let me know about those knee pads and how they look. You know what? Mm, I actually think we, we're gonna go back. We're gonna do, we're gonna do boots number nine. I think I think these are taller, but the number nine looked more the part. Yeah, they're real shiny. He had shiny boots, man. But they had the closed back. Got it. All right, we will do it. I'm taking. You're, you're the one with the, the good reference uh, in front of you, so I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah, this looks right. There was never really much of a gap between his knee pads and his boots, as I recall it. Yeah, like even on the figure in front of me, there's really not a ton of gap. Like there's a little, little bitty gap, but this is also a figure where he's wearing the old uh, Sid Justice the Blue trunks. So, all right, entrance attire. We got to get him his vest. And I know that there's only one vest in this game for him to wear. And it is uh, the Austin. We just got to turn this part black. Yeah, now we're, we're getting somewhere now. That's looking pretty good. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. All right, hang on. Let's, uh, cause I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a real quick screen grab here. go 
That's going in the thumbnail, folks. You're seeing, you're getting a little behind the scenes uh, here. White sock in between. Oh, I don't know if uh, I don't know if that's even a possibility in this game. Um, now I'm curious. No, I don't think it is. I don't think they can do that in this one. That's okay. We can't see between them. Right? He looks like he's ready for a fist bump. He's looking good. Like I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. All right, we're moving into the the moves and the fighting style. The fighting style is always easier. His fighting style was normal. He did not stand like a wrestler. Ring entry is definitely going to be over the top. Reversals are definitely heavyweights. Although he did he did some cool little light heavyweight stuff. He would kip up out of a headlock takeover hold. He you know he would he would he would surprise you. Uh, let's see speed. Uh, somewhere between normal and fast is how I would describe Sid. He would he would stalk you around the ring, but he was explosive when he needed to be. Uh, submission skills, oh, uh, novice at best. He was not a submission guy, not a not a grappler. Yeah, he can evade an Irish whip. Why not? The recovery rate, uh, I think, pretty normal. Bleeding, uh, you know, I, th I only really saw him bleed. I think like once or twice in his whole career. Reaction to blood was definitely aggression when it happened. There's a clip in uh, WCW. You can find a picture of him sitting. He's being held in the Steiner recliner and he's bleeding. And uh, he, uh, he looks mad, <laughs> put it simply. Uh, endurance, he's a, he's a big, strong boy. Hey, cheap viewers. Thanks, Espionage821. <laughs> what, a, what a name. Ugh. Turnbuckle climbing is definitely climbing. Oh, God, we can't have him come off the buckle. Ugh, cringy. Every, all you guys in the chat, you do know the Sid's one time coming off the top rope, right? <laughs> do we give him that move? Do we give him a, just a random kick from the top rope where he's going to hurt himself? We don't, right? It's definitely the shortest distance. Uh, no, he does not have a specific weapon. Uh, parameters, all right. Offensive strength. Legs are a zero. Okay, that's all we can do. Yeah, flying is also a zero. Arms can be pretty good. Body's going to be pretty good. Head for offensive strength? I don't know. He didn't really do any headbutts. Let's give him a little more on the arms. All right. Defensive strength. Again. Legs are going to be as low as possible. Flying is as low. Well, flying, he could knock someone out. Yes, the top rope boot. Devast devastating. Just to the wrong person. <laughs> that's that's true. Bobby, you don't know you don't know Sid's injury? Oh, my. Uh, I don't recommend watching it. It's because Terry Taylor told him to do it. Man, you know, I did some, I did some seminars with Terry Taylor, and I liked him a lot. But I don't like that he told Sid to do that. Yeah, Bobby, I would say uh, don't look up the Sid injury clip. Uh, he came off the top rope with a single foot kick and the foot he was trying to land on his uh, I believe his femur his shin bone just snapped in half it's horrific and terrible and it happened on a WCW pay-per-view uh, just just disgusting just terrible I don't recommend watching it defensive strength yeah his arms his arms can have a little de-strength seen it <laughs> Yeah, defense on everything else is going to be pretty good. All right, cool, cool, cool. Oh, you know what? Ally enemy. What do you guys think? Um, for his rival, are we uh are we doing this uh are we doing this in the era where Sean was his buddy or when Sean was his enemy? Right. That's. I mean, he's definitely not accompanied by Sean. He's accompanied by no one. So I think we make Sean his enemy. Where is Sean? Sean's like either deep back in the game or he's a hidden character I haven't unlocked. I think he's a hidden character I haven't unlocked, right? Okay, then he gets no enemies just yet. We'll say that's good. Yeah, I think I think enemy is the right call. Like that's sort of they're more famous for their work against each other than they work with each other. Give him a bat for a specific weapon. Uh, I mean, I could, I, if I could, I'd give him a squeegee for a specific weapon. And if you don't know that story, look it up. Uh, there's an argument you could give him scissors as his specific weapon. If you don't know that story, look it up. 
but the bat is pretty good with I, I get that that's a that's a softball reference and by the way i absolutely scoured steam looking for a softball game i could play as a tribute to uh to old uncle sid and just uh didn't didn't see one all right moves here we go oh that's true i could be his ally yeah, I don't want to accompany him to the ring every time, though. You know, I want I want him coming out looking like Sid. Sid stood alone. He was, he was the man. He was the master and the ruler. Let's jump right to strong grapple because we got to get him, get him that power bomb. That's really all that matters to me here is giving him a great power. Is basically the jackknife, like you know. Yeah, it's not in those. I know they have the jackknife in here. I think it's just listed as a regular power bomb. It's not. Maybe it's this one. I mean, that could probably do it. Put together a charity wrestler softball game in Sid's on. <laughs> oh no. Um, we're gonna remember that super snap power bomb is a maybe. Cause there's a lot of power bombs in here and I want I want one that feels like Sid's power bomb that one kind of did it certainly looked like the ones he was throwing in ECW because whoo boy he was he was he was not kidding around okay the snap power bombs maybe it's one of these nope not 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 the doctor bomb uh, maybe the O2 I think we're gonna go with that other one up above yeah, well, actually, this, uh, I know Tyler from NH was watching Sid squash matches earlier. Early on, that's kind of what his powerbomb looked like when he was really new. He would kind of kneel out with them to the side, and they would kind of come off sideways on it. Um, we're going to give him that as a different move. That's not going to be his finishing powerbomb, though. Let's, uh, we're going to go with the, the super snap powerbomb way up here. I think that feels right. Devastating. Pretty good. And he definitely threw some choke slams. They were not pretty choke slams all the time. Yeah, he had one that looked a bit like that. Where's the other choke slam? Because I'm definitely going to give him the old choke slam from hell. Because he had some choke slam from hell. Yeah, it started. That's how the power bomb started. And frankly, it looked more dangerous to me. And not in a good way. Um, he definitely got better at it over time. Now, we know from experience setting my stuff up that uh, the move is not in the game. But uh, yeah, we can give him this. That looks like something he'd have done to somebody. But uh, the parry-go-round, uh, which has a lot of different names in wrestling. I've heard it called the Whirly Bird, the Elevator. Uh, people, some people just call it the Spinning Crucifix Toss, the Spinning Razor's Edge. Um, but the parry-go-round, my signature move, is a move that I picked up from watching old Sid highlights. Because he would do that exact move, and he would chuck guys, and it just ruled. Um, all right, where's the uh, where's the body body press drop? Is that the one we want? Because he would do gorilla presses. He, he wouldn't drop. He would do the proper, like... He wouldn't do that one either. Maybe it's listed as gorilla press. I think it is. Again, there's a lot of my current move set that is like directly from, or no, it's military press is what they call them this one. It's directly from Sid. Like the influence is not small. Um, if we want to get into the story a little bit of how the, the Sid stuff came about, how I started kind of working that in, uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. Because uh, it was it was kind of an interesting ride that sort of led me to the human monster truck stuff. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. I like that. You know, let's give him. Let's give him that power bomb that looked like his. 
Yeah, um, three team stream, team scream trucks in MJ Showdown. Let's go. How have you been enjoying that? I want to know, but I will. I'm gonna talk about how uh, the Sid stuff came to be like a bit of what I was doing. Um, so essentially, I'd been the uh, rich uh, aristocratic snob for wow, uh, eleven years. The first eleven years that I wrestled, and um, I didn't. I had a couple little moves and little neat things I did, but I didn't really do much because I had been sort of trained in this idea that if you were a heel primarily, you didn't do cool moves. That was just sort of like the mentality that I was trained with. I don't love that. I don't, frankly, I don't even like that, really. Um, and uh, I adhered to it because I listened to my trainers. Uh, and, you know, I know um, I know Joey knows a bit about that. You know, you hear your trainers talk about something and you kind of take it in and, and try to learn from it. The skyscraper squash match. Oh, man, man, they went in on those guys. huh? They got mad. I remember that. Um, but I'd been doing this character for you know, uh, quite a long time. And um, I came back here to uh, the East Coast where I met Rip Bison at the time wrestling under the name Tomahawk, kind of embracing uh, some of his native heritage there. And um, we uh, we had one match against each other early on. He was a big, fiery, you know, vanilla baby face. And uh, I was the perfect kind of heel to go with him. The kind of, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, I was the chicken shit heel. I was Ted DiBiase in his later years. Um, not as much later years, thankfully, but his, his later wrestling years. And, um, oh, jumping front kick. Is this where he hurts himself? Uh, I was kind of the perfect foil to him. And, uh, so we kept getting put with each other all the time, like constantly, because we had one match together and it was really good. Like we, we had chemistry right away. Um, and so everywhere we went for maybe two years, everyone just wanted us to wrestle each other. And we were given more time. We were given fewer parameters. We were just told, go out there and go nuts. Do everything under the sun. You guys, you guys have great matches. And we did. But the problem was I'm a big dude that can, you know, I started doing more moves at that point and I would pick Rip up and throw him around and Rip uh, likes to throw chops and he would throw a lot of chops and I didn't like getting chopped, and he didn't like getting thrown around. Oh, yeah, if you watch the old PVV Tomahawk, I might do a watch-along on here sometime and go through the history of our time together. Um, but uh, if, you know, I, I, he didn't like getting thrown around, and I didn't like getting chopped. Um, so eventually we were kind of sick of wrestling each other. <laughs> um, so we, we just said, like, why don't we start teaming together? because then we won't have to wrestle each other. And uh, that was what we did. We formed a, a team. We'd been feuding for so long that we thought the, the great story of the team would be that we sort of had to call a ceasefire. Like, we weren't getting anywhere fighting with each other. There's actually a, a video on my YouTube that's sort of a um, explanation of this with some... It was like a sort of a character test piece for the team. Um where we were gonna, uh, we were gonna, actually, you know, he, he would throw a headlock takeover. Um, you know, we're basically, we, we, you know, we, we were, we were gonna be a team. We were gonna call a ceasefire. And of course the term for that in, uh, you know, in, in war in in actual, like real life, not in wrestling is uh, mutually assured destruction. You cause a ceasefire because either half could destroy the other at any moment. So we called our team Mutually Assured Destruction. We were mad. And the early iteration, I sort of mixed like, sort of like a commander with like a captain hat and a thing in with my rich guy shtick. It wasn't really feeling right. He was still Tomahawk at the time and had switched to a mask instead of face paint. And that really wasn't, wasn't feeling right to us. And we were really kind of struggling to find who we were at that point. And, um, Sort of right at the same time, I threw out the rich guy stuff entirely. And I said, we need to look the same as a team. So I switched to black trunks, like Sid. 
Um, I had been lifting at that point and, you know, put on a little size and a little muscle and uh, had kind of decided like, all right, I can wrestle like a big man, especially, you know, next to Rip. Rip changed his name to Rip Bison and became sort of like a bruiser Brody pastiche crossed with a bunch of other of his favorites. And um, I, I was like, well, you know, I've always kind of joked with some friends. Oh, Uncle Sid, Uncle Sid. Like it was a quiet joke with other wrestlers. And so I started getting announced to the ring as Uncle Sid's favorite nephew, which I thought was pretty good. Like I thought that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good way to say that. And uh, I started doing some of his moves. I would do a power bomb as a big finish. I would do the parry go round as like a falsy. Uh, I'd throw the occasional choke slam, and I still do. Um, and uh, yeah, just I spent probably the better part of a year before the world shut down as Uncle Sid's favorite nephew, Perry Von Vicious. Uh, the sort of last time I wrestled with that as the character uh, was the tapings for Limitless Wrestling's The Road while the world was shut down. We had those closed tapings that we did up in Maine with no audience. And uh, I had a great match with Rip uh, on that show. It's just a singles against each other. And um, I really, uh, it's a match I'm very proud of. And it was the last time, really, that I was Uncle Sid's favorite nephew. Uh, shortly after that, I kind of came up with the monster truck persona and realized, like, this felt more like me. I wasn't just doing my version of someone else. But at that point, I had established the parry-go-round as a, as a finish for me, and it felt like it was mine. And uh, I just decided, you know what? Um, I'm going to keep some of Sid's moves because that's a part of my career I was really happy with. Bring it back my next match. Uh, so uh, this weekend at RPM Fest for Pro Wrestling Grind, I have a singles match with uh, BRG, who is a fantastic talent. He's on... Uh, he's everywhere out here. I've known him for years. We've wrestled before. He's with uh, MLW uh, a lot these days, and um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I throw throw a little Sid tribute into the match. Maybe a couple tributes. Um, you know, anytime I throw a big power bomb, I throw it the way Sid threw it, and um, I always I often will shout one for Uncle Sid before I do it. That's always been sort of my tribute to him. Um, and I, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I get that, that power bomb off this weekend. Um, and I'm going to, and I'm going to be shouting one for uncle Sid at the top of my lungs, especially since, uh, there's no commentary this weekend. So it's, it's on, it's on me to convey that. Um, I might, I might do like, uh, one of the like armband and write uncle Sid on it or something. Um, you know, it's an outdoor show, so it's always a little messy, hard to, like, get everything looking the way you want it. So we'll see if I can actually even get that together. Let's see. There's got to be, like, a... You know, I'm just going to do the... Uh, he, he would do a back rake from time to time. He wasn't above a back rake. Um, but, yeah, this... Uh, seeing Sid Pass is such a bummer and, and such a big surprise. That's right. That's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck BRG high enough in the sky he can say hi to Uncle Sid one time. Although if you need, if you read enough stories about Sid, you might question if he's uh, or <laughs> tame the Kennergy on Sunday night. Hell yeah! <laughs> and what better place? What better place to beat up uh, a, a Ken doll than at a heavy metal festival? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it, you know. Um in 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 all, you know, in all seriousness, I like BRG. I think he's an incredible talent. I think uh, you know, to put it simply, I think wrestling's better for having him in it. And uh but you know, with me trying to pay a little bit of a tribute to old Uncle Sid, not about to just, you know, sit back and take any kind of butt kicking from someone who's half my size. Uncle Sid certainly wouldn't do that. Hell no. I show up and don't like how the match is going. I might just bail out of the ring, go play some softball. Let's see. 
because so many of these don't look like Sid things. Honestly, those big clotheslines are the only things that really feel like Sid. So that's all he's getting from behind. He's just going to whack them. No sense complicating it. Just go with the thing that feels like the character, right? That's right. That's right. He's half my size and has half the brain that I am. Just, I, I loved when he would start messing up in promos and saying weird stuff. I mean, I, every every week when I go live on on Twitch, I always post, We're live, pal! Yeah, that's uh, that's classic from a uh, from a Sid promo when uh, when Jr. had to when he says, "Can I take that again?" Because he was skipping over his words, and Jr. had to tell him, "We're live, buddy." Let's see, I think his special from behind's got to be like, what would he even do? He only ever did the damn power bomb. I mean, I guess I could see him hitting that as like a precursor to the power bomb. Oh, well, maybe a walking side slam as a precursor to the power bomb. Need to bust out a squeegee. Uh, I mean, I would sooner bust out a squeegee than a pair of scissors. Both of which popular weapons to <laughs> old Uncle Sid. In all fairness, as I understand it, uh, Arn was to blame for the scissor incident. That's just my understanding. I'm definitely biased in believing that, but here we are. Let's see. What would he do from here? I think and he would throw a Russian leg sweep once in a while. All right. And then this other one, I'm just going to have him counter. Good. Good. Moving right along. Weak striking. Sid didn't have weak strikes. He just walloped people. <laughs> yeah, I think that's okay. He definitely threw some big wampin' hook punches, like some big wolf. They were not pretty either. A lot of Sid's offense was not pretty. Front kicks. These are what I want, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's all he's got. He didn't do anything fancy. His striking was not fancy. Sorry, off topic, but please see if you can get booked for APW Clipper City Rumble. You, know, you want to throw me out of the ring? Yeah, I. If you could pick me up off of the ground, I would be shocked, Joey Nails. Uh, but, I mean, that's kind of the point of a rumble, right? you got to shock your opponents because you are the shock master. Yeah, Sid's, Sid's strikes were just ugly as sin, so... So I'm not, I'm not worried about giving him pretty cool-looking stuff here. Here we go. That's the one I was thinking of. That uh, no, there's a there's an even bigger. Oh, maybe a big boot. Yeah, big boots right for him. I'm gonna send your keister to the moon. <laughs> Make sure. That, okay, 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 Joey nails. You know what? You uh, you go tell your contact at APW to get a hold of me. They reach out, and I, I just might find my way there. What, what what town is that happening in? I believe I'm free that day. Let's see. He would definitely... Definitely a rising, or maybe... Yeah, I think he might do the big whomp and haymaker. Just the big whomp. New Newsbury Port. You mean Newbury Port? Uh, the uh, alleged home of uh, of John Cena. Man, that's far out there. I mean, I'll I'll do it. I'm I'm, I'm not above driving far for a match. I drove all the way up to Maine six hours to lose a match. 
Drove back six hours, slept four hours, got up, drove an hour and a half down to Connecticut, lost another match. I'll drive all day to lose a match. Think I'm scared to drive just to go lose a match? I'll do it. Sid would tell you that's not going to work for me, brother. That's not going to work for me, brother. He would say, uh, he, he would get up there and be like, I got a softball game that weekend. I'm going to be late to the show. I got softball. Hey, I appreciated seeing you in Hartford, but Sid is right, brother. Hey, it was, it was good to see you too. Uh, I was, it's always, always good to run into familiar faces, especially when I'm just, you know, just, uh, I'm always a little bit flustered at, uh, at the large, uh, festival shows and the big convention shows. Yeah, we can go with just, uh, let's see, what, what are the other options for the, eh, let's, let's do this one. Yeah, I like that better. Special counter punch, yeah, definitely front grapple, because we're going to give them, we're going to give them that power bomb. Hey, thanks for the subscription. Big night. Everyone loves a Sid tribute. We got bits rolling in. We got we got subscriptions rolling in, you know. The people came to see Sid. That's right. That's right. I didn't throw one this weekend. I was gonna I was I was gonna hit one in the match with the uh, CPA. And I wound up going for the parry go round anyway and I I I regret not taking the chance, but uh Joey Nail with some more bits. Because he says he's going to retire me someday. Whoa, Joey Toolbox Nail. <laughs> uh, that's why they call you Big Little Joey Nails. Elbow Crusher? Let's see, what's the Elbow Crusher? Nah, well, yeah, I could see him doing that. You know what? We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. Oh, Big Standing Close. Yeah, that's one I always hit good enough for me it's good enough for old uncle sid we'll do the back special counter all right good walking moves that's about how he walks yeah he doesn't really do anything special when he walks i mean unless you count like having so much charisma that entire buildings come unglued when all you do is walk through the curtain seriously you like you gotta you gotta watch uh that that survivor series match tyler uh from new hampshire was saying uh you gotta watch survivor is it survivor series 96 it's 96 right um yeah it'd have to be because 97 was the brett incident survivor series 96 uh sean and sid i believe it's on youtube you gotta watch uh when he makes his entrance, that place comes unglued for Sid. And he's supposed to be the heel. They couldn't get enough of him. There's, you hear people talk about people with the it factor. And man, Sid 100% had it. Larissa, who my initials uh, for real would be LJN. Little Joey Nails. Oh, so you got to have like one of the big rubber guy figures. Like the old LJNs. Hell yeah. That's that's good marketing. All right. Running attacks. He didn't do a lot of running, but it was mostly just violent clotheslines. So I'm just going to give him a lot of different clothesline variations. Not that one, though. Yep, that's good. That's good. Yep, that's good. Keep it simple. No reason to overcomplicate things. He didn't do a lot of running big boots. He would do them from standing mostly. Like people would, people would kind of just run into him. Oh Perry, they're coming out with a Bruiser Brody big. Ro yeah, I saw that. I think you sent that to me. The the announcement about that. Yo, that rules. Like that was awesome. All right, running grapples. Like what? What even would he do in a running grapple? Like what? Maybe, maybe the neck breaker thing. I don't know. Yeah, maybe a swinging neck breaker. He'd do the old shake, rattle, and roll. 
I don't think he'd be. I don't think he'd be scared to hit the. Yeah, probably a bulldog. Cause he's not gonna do that. He's not gonna do that. And he's darn sure not doing that one. Yeah, it's just a regular old bulldog, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Zack Ryder's company that makes the LJN style big rubber guys. They're making a Brody next year. Uh, I mean, there's already that amazing uh, faces and heels. Um, you know, Zombie Sailor, uh, uh, Hasbro style Brody. They ran out of the one that had the furry vest, so now you can only get them without the vest. I want them so bad, but every time I every time I go to get them, I'm like, I'm just gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off, see if they get the vest, and I know eventually I'm just gonna run out of time and not get them. But I did see Zombie Sailor is announced. Uh, I believe Doctor Death coming to that line soon, so that rules. A lot of my favorites getting made. I uh, I technically don't have a uh, Sid Hasbro figure, but uh, I do have the STL files to 3D print my own copy of it. So I think I'm probably just going to do that. And then when I do it, rather than because the, uh, the Hasbro had the blue, like the Bendem, rather than the blue, I think I'm going to paint him in the black, make him look like he did, you know, in, in what I consider his heyday. All right, he definitely didn't do any big senton. He did leg drops, and that was it, and that was all. And it would all just be leg drops. He didn't do any other real ground. I could see him doing a stomp. That's fine. Yeah, stomp is fine. Okay. This is the nice thing about doing Sid's moves. Real simple. I, I probably will just print it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> all right, let's see. For evasion, he would do a roll before he would do a cartwheel. That's for sure. Boy, you know, the more he moves around the ring, the more he's starting to look a little bit more like Sid in my eyes. Like, it's still not exact. You know, we couldn't get the hair quite the way you would think it would be. But that's okay. Submissions. I think the head pound is probably good. That seems like Sid. You know, I don't think he's throwing any my straw cradles. He would definitely do a camel clutch, though. He grabbed that in a lot of matches. No, well, maybe that surfboard. Maybe a sleeper. Not this. It's too fancy. No. Not really a front headlock. They've they've labeled some of these kind of strange. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go with the uh, with this one because that does seem like something Sid would do. In fact, I'm certain I've seen him do it. None of these are gonna be what I want for him, huh? Front headlock. Let's see. Why is that That's so bad? All right. Oh, yeah. Power Town made a Brody. Uh, he does. Rip does have that one. He also has the uh, the Hanson. They came out at the same time. He ordered both of them right away. Yeah, the Maki Ito Bendem from Cardona's company looks super good. I'm hoping that um, because Cardona works so closely with Heels and Faces and Zombie Sailor, I'm hoping that means that Zombie Sailor makes a Maki Ito eventually because at this point I'm kind of bought in on the Hasbros being kind of what I'm going to try to collect. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that ended up being the case, but it just did. I used to have a ton of the originals, and then years ago, I just I knew I didn't have space for them, and they'd been sitting in my parents' garage in a box for a long time. So I uh, I just gifted all of them to uh, Sidney Bacabella, and it kicked off his collection. And I don't regret that for a second because I love I love Sidney. I've known him for years. One of the first people I met in wrestling. Uh, helped me do a lot of my original breakout bookings before I moved to California. Yeah, we can do the mounted punching. I think that's good. Uh, no, 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 no. All right, let's see. Uh, none of these are good for him. Okay, we'll just keep the camel clutch. We're just never going to do that, so. Spinning leg crush. Boy, if that's not an ironic thing to give Sid. Knee smash is good. I could see him doing that. Knee stomp is probably good. Yep, I could see him doing that. Again, he's not a, not a technical guy. Facing up specials. I love this figure four pin. Where you figure four the legs and do a jackknife. 
I don't see enough guys do that. I'm gonna leave none here. I'm gonna leave none here because he didn't he didn't do this stuff. Yukita would be um, uh, for a long time now I've said there's only a few current wrestlers that I'm really truly intrigued by that I like to watch what they do. I find them real like compelling. Um, Effie for sure, Danhausen way top of the list. Maki Ito. Uh, the Tony Storm stuff I think is amazing. Uh, I love that she's flowing in and out of characters and finding ways to make it new. Um, uh, and there's there's a couple others that I'm not thinking of. Uh, but like just love them. Uh, I love big characters. Uh, War Horse is somebody that I, I always keep a close eye on. He's he's a friend. We've we've uh, we've wrestled each other a few times. Um, all right, let's see. We need like a we need like a standing leg drop because that's really what he would do. Yeah, stomp is good. Yeah, he's gonna do more like a front kick. No, like a regular front kick. No, no. Yeah. Yep, I think that's a good one for him. Cool. I like that a lot of the preset ones are like. Totally good. Uh, see, I, I really like the timeless gimmick. It's giving her a chance to like flex a muscle she hadn't done previously, you know? Before it was just like workhorse, workhorse, workhorse. You know, I just, I have great matches. There wasn't a ton of character there. And I love the big character. Joey Nails is my favorite up and comer. Uh, you know, you know, Joey Nails, I've only ever seen you wrestle once and it was at a seminar I was running. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put the cart before the horse. Oh, speaking of which, uh, when this stream is over, remind me I have all of the notes, the post-seminar notes, and the links to your match to send along to uh, you and everyone else who did the seminar. We we finished those a couple days ago and sat on them to kind of like look them over and read them over. So I have those for you guys. Remind me, send me a message when this stream is over. I bet you thought we'd forgotten already. I mean, not to throw Rip under the bus, but he probably would have just forgotten. All right, I want like a stand. Oh, what's what's the Bradshaw thing? Yeah, okay, that's good. It's not like a body hook punch up here. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Good. Oh, this is definitely going to be like a big, heavy clothesline in the corner. What's the clothesline from hell look like? I'm, nah, no good. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. I think this is the one. Nah, I trust that y'all care. <laughs> Your Rip was real happy that you guys traveled out. When I told him, uh, I was like, yeah, I dropped the belt, and I explained sort of the backstory of where you guys were, and he goes... Where'd they go? And I told him, and I and he goes, "Hey, it's outside of Maine, and that's a good show to do. Good for them." And then he literally says, "He goes, well, they were listening to us, so he loves that you guys paid attention when we said you got to get places other than Maine." All right, we're actually getting through these moves a lot faster than than on previous uh, streams, so we're a hundred percent gonna get to do a Sid match before we're done here. Yep, the boot is good. No, he would just... His stuff's just going to be punching or kicking. Come on, let's... Uh, body hook punch? Yeah, that's good. Bradshaw hammer. Yep, that's a good one. I don't know if I'm even going to find an attack here that I like. Maybe the spear in the corner. Yeah, I think that's going to be the one for him. Not a thing he would really do, but it feels like him. Yeah, he would throw a big chop every once in a while. And boy, dude Sid size chopping you. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, I can see him doing that. Good. 
Let's see, what would he do over here? Would he take him up? We gotta give him some kind of like avalanche move. Oh yeah. Uh, dude, sending a thank you message to promoters is, that's something that like, at some point I wanna come up and do a whole seminar that's just wrestling etiquette for you guys and talk about like how to manage contact with promoters, reaching out places, um, how to manage your socials, you know, marketing, all those kinds of things and, you know, stuff that you need to have packed with you all the time. Um, I'd love to do that sometime, but you know, we got, we got a lot of, uh, basics to kind of cover. Good. Yeah. Torres would know that. Yep. For sure. Yep. Hey, J Joey Nels is going to forget about us the instant he's famous and I don't blame him for a second. I'd forget about me too. see no come on something here is gonna feel like him is it just gonna have to be a superplex i think it is that's okay superplex is all right what's what's wrong with a superplex right okay i believe there's a top rope superpower bomb the old awesome bomb we're gonna give it to him we're gonna we're gonna have him do it look at this nasty yeah that's what i'm talking about that's another another one of my passed away heroes, Mike Awesome. Gonna require Triple H to pay Perry to carry my bags. Hey, for the right price, I'll carry bags. There's worse jobs. Besides, I would still talk down to you and tell you everything you were doing wrong. You know, just because I'm a vet. That's my favorite thing now. Hearing vets that have no clue what they're doing tell other people what they're doing wrong. Kills me. Okay. Yeah, I like that Sid's uh, moveset is real simple. I don't have to come up with anything really, like, cool. I can just have him just mess people up. Now that's the only option he'll have to do it, even though he never would. Oh boy, flying attack. No, Sid, don't go to the top rope. What are you thinking? All right, let's, okay. We'll find it. There's gotta be like some dumb kick he can do. I don't want him to die. None. <laughs> okay, well he would definitely do like an ax handle, right? Like we could all agree that that's okay. Sending opponent to outside. I don't think so. You know, let's give him the axe handle anyway. It's just better to have a move than to not. I hate it, though. He would never come off the top rope on a downed opponent. None. I'm not even going to give him the option. Nope, just none. Don't care if it limits him. It ain't something he would do. There ain't enough money in the world to tell Sid to go diving to the outside. Can't do that. What if I get hurt? I wouldn't be able to play softball. Thanks, Sid. You know, that's uh, something... Like, it's one thing to say, like, I took moves from Sid. It's another thing to say, like, I got a little bit of what I know about, like, charisma and, like, eye contact with an audience and how you carry yourself in a ring. I can't live up to it how he did it, but I've learned from watching him. But there's a lot to be learned about the way he carried himself in the business. He knew his worth. Uh, he wouldn't put wrestling ahead of his family or his own personal happiness. There's something really awesome about that. And I don't see that enough. Watched a certain person tell a fellow student how to do an arm ringer the wrong way. Oh, my. okay. Well, I'm going to get that story from you uh, offline. We don't need that in text on a video on the internet. Get you in trouble with somebody. Bobby Gilbert managing Joey Nails. Uh up in the fed working for old trips i know that's where bobby wants to be <laughs> i see your tweets i know let's see i don't think there's anything over here that he would do maybe the leg drop would he do the leg drop no not a chance he wouldn't do that no would he do an elbow would he do an elbow no there's no there's no world where sid does any of these moves no he gets none of those Turnbuckle taunt. No, he's not doing a hands. Come on, guys. No, he's not headbanging. 
He's not dancing. Guys. <laughs> hey, everybody's got their preferences. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just think it would be real funny if you wound up getting offered a job in the company you don't prefer. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I also don't go out of my way for that company either. Um, I have a lot of very good friends, or uh, at least a handful of good friends who are there. Um, and I'm really happy for them. But, uh, yeah, not, not for me either. You know, I watch, I watch like two or three of their big shows every year. You know, I watch Mania, I watch the Rumble. Uh, occasionally, if like SummerSlam looks really good, I'll check it out. Or like, if Survivor Series looks interesting. But like, really, it's just those two shows. And then I kind of catch clips here and there. Um, I did watch All In. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun. And again, I thought, I thought Match of the Night was Tony Storm, Mariah May. They told a great story and like, just they put on a great performance there were other incredible matches of course i mean how are you gonna say anything bad about osprey mjf what a match and i mean danielson at the end like i've only i didn't finish watching the show i watched his entrance and that was very emotional um you know i was i was an roh fan i was an roh kid when he was there and i would go uh i would go to the shows and watch him uh in fact uh yeah yeah Hey, Nigel coming back was huge, too, because I was a big ROH guy in those days. Um, you know, I uh, uh, the first date that my now wife and I went on, she does not like wrestling and doesn't care. She just wanted to hang out with me. And I didn't, you know, we weren't together at the time. And I wasn't even, like, supposed to be a date necessarily. It wound up being kind of a date, but... Uh, I just needed a ride to an ROH show and I knew all my other college friends had gone home for the summer and she was around so I told her hey I'll buy you a ticket if you want to drive me and now we've been married for 13 years 13 years 2011 to, yeah 13 years uh, 13 years on Halloween so yeah club club to chest strong will be the suplex to inside uh, let's suplex him in if we have a special. Yeah, suplex him to the inside. Good. No, he's not doing any. We're not. Sid's not doing moon salts. This. It ain't that kind of movie, kid. <laughs> but your dad, Christian Cage, won. Man, I was I was such a big Christian Cage fan uh, when I was in college. Like he was one of my guys. Um, that was when he was the charismatic enigma uh, Christian Cage, and he was on. Um, he's not doing any dives to the outside. What are we doing? What is this? Come on. Um, that was when he was in TNA, and he was their champion. I met him when he was uh, when the TNA belt was still the NWA title. Oh, there's like a like a Pac move, or like a maybe a, a Will Osprey would do that. A baseball slide. It's almost like softball, but I don't think Sid would ever do that. Yeah, none of these are going to work. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Grizzly coming in hot. The Grizzly crew. Yeah, Jeff Hardy a little bit for sure. All right. Yeah, and we're going to take this away too. He doesn't need any of these. That ain't how Sid does. Yeah, welcome. Welcome, Grizz. Uh, the whole Grizz crew coming, coming in. Happy to see you. Doing a doing a little uh, tribute to my uh, my old uncle Sid because I you know we we all learned he uh, he passed away today, 63, cancer, uh, old old uncle Psycho Sid vicious. So I figured uh, now is as good a time as any to make him a no mercy so that uh, you know he and I can team together uh, virtually. All right, he's not gonna have any of those either. Good. We're just about through the move set, so we're going to be on to doing a match with this guy pretty soon. Let's see, I think I think he's doing the punch. Yeah, he's doing he's doing the strong kick. Good. Grapple from apron. Well, let's see. I don't I don't like doing that because sometimes you do that in a. Uh... Oh, you did a tribute to sit on your team. What did you guys do? Anything uh, anything special? love to hear it arm breaker yeah maybe the arm breaker 
We could suplex him to the outside. Yeah, why not? Sid's not afraid to bump someone dangerously to get himself over. He knows what the people came to see. Power bomb to outside for sure. Let's go. No, no, we're taking him out. He's not doing any fancy uh, cruiserweight reversals. That ain't that ain't Sid. Yeah, he, he could do that. That's fine. Yeah, he's not doing any of those either. Not his style. Played Simpsons hit and run. Oh, talked about him. Okay, moment of silence. I I appreciate that. That's great, man. We were talking earlier about like all the influence he's had on me and everything I do. Now, I've definitely seen Sid do that from time to time, the little shoulder block. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I, I kind of wonder, like, if I would even still be wrestling if I hadn't started adopting a lot of what Sid was doing. Um, because it really is, like, it's great for longevity. You know, I was, before I started doing a lot of Sid stuff, I was doing moonsaults in a lot of my matches. I was doing a lot of dives. I was a lot lighter. I wasn't lifting as much. Um, and I, I do think that, uh, you know, kind of taking the big man approach and saying like, you know, uh, I'm big enough that I don't need to do some of these dives. I can break them out when, when it's special. And I kind of wonder how much longevity that's added to, to my in-ring career. Um, and it, honestly, it just, it really works. Audiences love a big dude that picks people up and chucks them around. Like, they just love it. Um, you know, I, I wrestled CPA. Uh, I was the first challenger for CPA's belt this weekend at uh, Retro World. And um, I came out, you know, playing the full villain. And the crowd loved me anyway because I was huge and I was picking CPA up and chucking them around. Um, which was surprising. I, you know, they were very behind him and I thought they wouldn't like it, but they just, you know, wrestling fans love a big guy. Right, definitely. Well, he, he would, he would probably do a, uh, whoa. Okay. Yeah. I want to keep that. See, Joey Nail says, I really want to work Perry and have Bobby Gilbert run in to screw Perry over. Bobby Gilbert would never, would never screw me over. He is a loyal friend and fan. Awesome. Uh, we would have went, but we had Leonard Skinner concert that day. Wow. That's cool. I hope, I hope that was fun. You know, a few weeks back, uh, I was doing a show up in Maine and kind of got hijacked by Delmi and Rip and ZPB and... Uh, they took me to a classic rock concert. We went and saw um, Foreigner and Styx. I didn't know that that concert was even happening, and there we were. Yeah, that's uh, Bobby's going to show up and do the ten bell for uh, Sid. Oh, you, you're doing it on on stream tomorrow? I love that. That's great. All right, let's see. He's, yeah, he's going to throw up. Yeah, the big chucking, big chucking power slam. Oh, there's going to be a military press in here, right? Uh, might. Ooh, is that a power bomb? Not a power slam. Okay. Scrolling too fast. Oh, the swing and choke slam. He definitely did from time to time, especially early on in those early squash matches. Oh, the figure promotion. Gotcha. Wow, Skinner, ZZ Top, and the Outlaws. Okay, so that's that's very similar to what I went through. It's a very like collection of classic rock bands. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was I was uh, a little bit bummed. I uh, last week, uh, just this past Friday, in fact, I went to see uh, Tim Minchin in Boston, who is one of my favorite comedy artists. Um, and uh, I was thinking I was gonna vlog a bunch of it and you know put it in a vlog episode, get a bunch of clips from the show. And um, the theater was very strict about no video, no photos, even. Um, and Tim himself came on the mic before the uh, show to kind of say like, hey, if at all possible, could everyone just actually turn their phones off so that no one's interrupted, no one's distracted? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan, so I wasn't that put out by it, really. 
songs and i just went with it and uh it did make the concert experience a lot better like i was very present and really enjoyed it um that said it does mean that there's not going to be any uh any vlog content of going to see tim minchin which is a shame but there's a million a million clips of him on youtube you can check out his stuff on spotify and if uh if you've ever seen uh, like Matilda the Musical, I believe it's on Disney Plus now. Uh, he wrote all the lyrics and music for that, so you get a lot of stuff from him there. Oh, you went to see Creed a few nights ago. Oh, someone else I know was at the Creed concert. Was that a? Uh, was that in? Um, uh, that, that was that in Boston or in Connecticut? Because I know they did both of those recently. They did Hartford and Boston. Yeah, we're gonna go with the the power bomb there. Yeah, look at Sid. Look at him go. Hell yeah. Alright, as far as the taunts, there is a real specific taunt. I believe it's in the ducking taunts. That was a mainstay for Sid early on. He would drop to one knee, throw both arms out to the side, and kind of give you, like, the come on with both hands. Oh, Saratoga Springs. Okay, cool. That must have been really nice. Good weather for that? I'm, I'm assuming that was outdoor amphitheater show, right? Let's start at the top for this and see what we find. Okay, it's gonna be down here somewhere. That's pretty close. Good. I'm supposed to get out to the beach later this week and uh, the weather's looking questionable for me, which is really a shame. I've not had a beach day yet this summer, not one. So hoping it clears up. But then, uh, you know, then I'm going one-on-one -on -one with BRG Saturday, or Sunday. Saturday, I'm going to the Three County Fair in Northampton, Mass, uh, checking out the uh, School Bus Demolition Derby. Grizzly Kid's got to run. He's got work tomorrow. You have a great night, too, Grizz. Always happy to see you bounce in. Happy to talk some Sid with you. We'll see you at uh, probably on the 13th for Blitz, I would imagine. Come on. I know this taunt's in the game. It's going to be, like, way at the end, right? Is it really not in here? I could have sworn I had seen this. Okay, I might have to just give him the, like, flexing one that's pretty close. I, I, maybe it's in the regular taunts and it's not in the ducking taunt. Give him that one for now. I'm not going to worry about the other taunts. Taunts are really a secondary concern for me. See, Bobby says, I'd be in Perry's corner and then turn on him near the end. I think that's probably the right call. Yeah. That's the right call. All right, double teams. Here we go. Front grapple. Definitely double power bomb drop. Oh, yeah. If I'm Sid, this is what I'm doing with somebody. Back grapple. Yeah, we go with this one. Why not? Sandwich grapple. Oh, it's the power bomb for sure. Irish whip grapple. Yeah, double arm drags. Fine. Why not? Oh, we gotta we gotta move the camera. Mm hmm. Let's say none. Let's also say none. And then let's say none. He's not doing any of that. Sid, Sid is an island. He stands alone. Yep, and he's punching his way out of it for sure. Okay, good, good. Hey, and we're done with moves. All right. In that case, we're going to go ahead and save Sid. And bail out of the SmackDown Mall. And uh, what do you say we uh, we hit a quick match with Sid? See how see how he plays. Let's just do like a regular regular old singles match. I think nothing nothing fancy. All right. Uh, See, take him to Raw's War. He uh, he made one appearance at Raw's War uh, when he uh, he had that run when uh, Heath Slater was wrestling all the legends, and he was one of the ones that came out and beat up Heath Slater. That was that was awesome. I believe that was his final match, and he got to do it on like national television for WWE. Like, that's a pretty good way to go out, you know. All right, good, good. Let's, uh, let's say TKO counts. Why not? All 
right, no belt. All right, and let's start. All right, we are playing as Sid. And we are gonna take on, who should we wrestle? Who should we, who should we take on as Sid? Maybe like a, like a Jeff Hardy or someone. Like that feels like someone that Sid would have bumped around like a nutcase. Like, uh, Malenko's too technically proficient. I can't win a match against him. Really kind of a pain. Maybe beat up Taka? Hmm. Crash Holly would have been a good one. What do you guys think? You got anyone you want to see me take on as Sid? I'm not putting him on my screen. He doesn't get screen time on my stream. Unless it's a rumble and then I have no control over it. But I appreciate where your heart is on that. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one Val in wrestling. And it's uh, uh, Valerie Venus spelled differently. Yeah, every, everyone's saying Val. Yeah, I, I, I listen, I want to beat up Val Venus as much as anyone else, but I also don't want to give him screen time on my stream. As far as I'm concerned, this is a happy place. He doesn't exist. I don't want to wrestle Eddie. Eddie's too good. He's going to he's gonna whoop me. What are his alternate outfits? Maybe there's like a version of Eddie that would be easier to take. What about, what about like Taz? Maybe like pretend it's ECW when he had... Oh, we gotta make an alternate costume for Sid. We gotta have his uh, his ECW uh, attire. Can I do alternate costumes for? I can do alternate costumes for created guys, right? Should I do that? You know, let's do let's do one match first. I'm getting getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. We're doing it with Taz. Here we go. All right. I have no idea what the music or anything's going to be for Sid, so we're just going to kind of watch him here and see what he does. Oh, that looks so good. He definitely would not do the weird bow thing. Psycho Sid Vicious. Hey, it's even displaying right. Like, I'm happy with that. give him anything there. Mm, it feels like Sid did a lot of beating guys up on the outside. Take him out. Whoop him a little bit. Bring him back in. And this kind of crappy little choke slam that he would do. This is working out pretty okay. Stepping over the top, good. Right now I'm really, I feel like I'm just doing all the checks to make sure that he moves right and it feels like Sid. How do we think? Is it, is it when you're watching him move around the ring, does it feel like Sid or is it? I can, to me, the hair just really isn't quite right, but there wasn't anything better, so I don't know. go here we go it's time oh no it's stone cold I wonder if I can hit him with one real quick not quite didn't quite keep the special long enough that's okay Big choke slam. Yeah, ah, nice. 
Lump him right on top of Taz. Good, good. This feels like ECW, Sid. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging how this worked out. This is, this is working pretty good. I love when they go into the special camera angles. Oh, I'm getting right up, huh? All right, well, let's bring you out to the middle, make this pin a little bit easier. I can remember how to pin a guy in this game. Oh, that's not it. Oh, it shifted focus. Guys, I gotta get the right replay on this. I can't just... Oh no! Tazplex! That was, that was fun in ECW when uh, that that dink Joey Styles would call everything some version of a Tazplex. Exploder Tazplex. Leg capture Tazplex. They were all just regular suplexes. You just called them Tazplexes. Getting right up, okay. Whoa, another Tazplex. Yeah, that's right, T-Bone Tazplex. That feels like a Sid move. He's starting to feel more like Sid the more I use him here. Especially just getting right up from that move. That feels like Sid. Whoa, Taz. Taz no selling for Sid. How dare he? For God's sakes, this is Uncle Sid. You gotta sell for him. He's like 6'10. I think we're just, just gonna throw some choke slams until it's time here. You know what? Go out and hit Stone Cold with a choke slam real quick. Kind of just waiting for one here. Swing and a miss. There we go. Yeah, just you go think about what you've done, Taz. Come on. Come to Uncle Sid. Whoa! A big reversal. Oh, oh, oh. No, you don't get to be KO'd that quick. He tried he tried to be knocked out. I was about to win by TKO. Which is unacceptable. Gotta win with the power bomb. Now he's just about out again. 
Now's the time for a power bomb. Here we go. This might be it. Oh yeah. I don't know why he's doing that taunt. That's I really should have fixed the taunts. Let's check this replay for Uncle Sid. Little Sid approves. hop back in the Smackdown Mall real quick and see if we can set him up with an alternate costume. We're going to edit the Superstar. Go to Sid. Aha, we do get to set up a second outfit. Type 2 Uncle Sid. Let's go. Heck yeah. All right. Appearance. We got to go ring attire and we got to put him in some some jeans because that's what he wore in ECW got to get him as ECW this is like his later in his career era someone's got jeans there's definitely jeans in here but they got to have they got to have the boots over them I don't think he bothered with knee pads in ECW because he knew he wasn't taking any bumps. Oh, these are going to be, these are going to have the boots under them, aren't they? Oh, that's kind of the look. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We got I got to look up Sid and ECW and see, did he have the knee pads on? Let's get a reference picture up here. Oh, a denim vest. They definitely don't have that in this game. Okay, it looks to me like no knee pads. Yeah, definitely no knee pads here. We got him, uh, got a few reference shots. It actually kind of looks like his boots aren't even over. I could have sworn the boots were over the jeans, but maybe they're not. Yeah, I guess not. Uh, that, well, what's, what's going on in this? Sorry, you guys aren't seeing any of this. Let me... Uh, See if I can uh, real quick get a get an image up for you guys and yeah here we go. That's right. He did. Did he wear the knee pads over the jeans with Heath Slater? Because maybe I'll have two versions. But yeah, no knee pads, and in fact, the boots were under the jeans there. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, yeah, I guess if we go with like, can we make these blue and get rid of the knee pads maybe? Mm, those are kind of too, too blue. What about jeans? Oh, those are going to be way off. Uh, you know what? I think we might just go with this one and I'll just lose the knee pads and change the footwear how he wrestled after WCW. He did he did and boots over. So he had the knee pads and boots over against Heath Slater. Okay. Yeah, I only got to see uh, Sid wrestle live one time. Um, and it was after I'd started training to be a wrestler. Uh, I went to a show out in Eastern Mass that a bunch of my friends were on and uh, got to see uh, Sid versus Too Cold Scorpio of all people. Like, of all the combinations to have. All right, yeah, we're going to do that. And then we're going to go to his feet. And we're going to switch to uh, from, let's see. I think, I think he kind of just had, like, wow. Wow, boots, too? I, I don't think I ever saw any of these. Wow. I've never scrolled past regular boots. Um, it's been a long time since I've kind of made my way through everything in this game. Uh, he definitely didn't wear, like, wrestling shoes. But, like, that actually looks kind of similar to how his boots stuck out. 
So let's go with that. Yeah, that looks... Uh, he had let his hair get a little longer. I kind of want to see what we do. Yeah, like if you look, that's kind of... We sort of got the look going there. Um, I kind of want to see what happens if we switch him to... It was these that were like the dread, which doesn't feel right, but it might read right from like further away because it might look like curly. Let's see. Ooh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Does that sort of read right? How's that looking on your guys' screens? Because I think that's actually not bad. Because he had the longer hair in, uh, in ECW. He had kind of let the mullet come in. So you had the curly mullet. I don't know. What do you guys think? I need I need I need some feedback in the chat, or I'm I'm gonna be too indecisive. <laughs> Not the green screen messing with uh, toy Sid here, Lil Lil Sid. Doom do do doom do. Do a tag with me and Uncle Sid. I think you're right. I think that's kind of got that's got to be what we like end on here. Yeah, I think it looks like him, right? God, do we change the hair to that on the other version too? Because I think it might look better on the other version. That looks pretty good. Yeah, actually, you know, what do you what do you guys think? Really random, but hilariously, Torres got me on Sabrina Carpenter's new stuff. Yo, Sabrina Carpenter's stuff is really good. Um, same with uh, the uh, the Olivia Rodrigo album. Like, in what world does a 40-year-old goof like me, who is like a weird Al and, and like punk rock guy, hear the Olivia Rodrigo album and go, whoa, but like, man, it's super good. Um... What do you guys think? Do we switch the hair on the uh, the first version or do we keep it shorter? Because that sort of like mullet hair is really looking kind of Sid. I don't know. Tough call. Tough call. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going back and forth between the two. Joey Nail says switch it. Tyler from New Hampshire, what do you think? Switch it to the, the braids on the first one, too. Go with mullet Sid. All right, I think I'm, I think, I think I'm doing it. I think I'm doing it. I think it's going to look better. And you know what? That's right. There's an alternate costume. We still have them with the short hair. So we just have multiples now. So we got that one and we got that one. Yeah, that's actually, that's looking pretty, that's looking pretty Uncle Sid. I think that's pretty good. All right, let's bail out of there. Bail out of there. Bail out of there. And let's go run a match because, because you guys are absolutely right. I think it was, I think it was Bobby uh, who said, I got to, I got to do one where I team with Sid here. I, I think you're absolutely right. Tag match. Gonna go one and then all CPUs. There we go. Like doo -doo -doo. And I think we uh, maybe we go to Mania for it. The tag help. No tag. Just let everyone run wild. You think? I think we let everyone run wild. Get a little get a little crazy in here. All right, so I will be me. Oh, I gotta, I gotta make the other versions look like me. The other versions are plain still. How many versions do I get in this game? All right, Delmi. Oh yeah, Delmi also could tag with me. If only there was, if only there were six mans in this. Did Joey show you his new monster truck? Uh, he may have. I know he messaged me he was picking one up, and I don't remember what it was. I was at the store earlier looking for some of the new releases, because there's some, there's some good ones, man. That, that Bog Hog uh, King Sling 2-pack, I need it. 
In fact, I might need one or two of them so I can do some custom work on some of them. Scratch attack? Scratch attack. Oh, right, you said it was a cat. Uh, I didn't see it. You should definitely tweet me a picture of it. Like 100%. All right, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, classic Sid for the tag, so we're both in trunks, or put him in his ECW attire? I think, I'm thinking Classic Sid is the way to go. What do you guys think? Can't wait to see us enter together. Even though Sid has, like, the wrong... Ooh, should we fix his entrance taunt so he does something like Sid would do? Yeah, I think we gotta. I think we gotta, we gotta fix it before we do it. I hate to, I hate to double back like this, but it's gonna be the last thing we do on the, uh... It's got to be the last thing we do on here, and I got to I gotta get it. I got to get it right. All right, superstar options. Edit the superstar. Pop on over to Uncle Sid. Into his moves, all the way down to the taunts. We need the entrance taunt specifically to look right. And that is not right. All he's got to do is put his arms in the air or something, you know? Like a simple, ah, uh, no, that's that's like double J. Old friend of the family, double J. Uh, uh, we're going to find it. We're going to find the one. Yeah, this, uh, it does look like Sid now. Look at that. That's really reading as Sid. Yeah, please keep keep a lookout for that two pack. I stopped into uh, when I was headed up to MPW. I stopped in at a couple WalMarts to check for some. I did land a new monster truck. I did get a new monster truck. It's not in the room with me. I got the uh, Greenlight Kings of Crunch series uh, Crimson Crusher. It's uh, got the dually tires. Uh, it's one I've been looking for forever and just never spotted in the wild. Uh, so that you, you'll see that on the vlog. I meant to share it out. Let's see. No, no air guitar. Nope, no macho man. Yeah, that's, I think that's the one. Nice and simple Sid. All right, cool. Good, perfect. We are ready. We're ready to do this. Oh, man. oh, I think I saw, um, I saw a version of Bad Company in the stores recently, but it was, it wasn't like the one that, like right now he's a truck, he's a pickup, so he has like a proper tailgate, because that's, that's, Presumably what you're looking for is that tailgate tribute. Um, and I think they do have a new toy of that. But they had the old bad company that was sort of like a weird Jeep thing. Um, like it was like a partial truck. Um, you could probably find pictures of it online the way it looked. Um, and that would have been before that tailgate. All right. Exhibition. Tag match. Want me and a bunch of computers at WrestleMania. We want no tag, because we want Uncle Sid in there with us the whole time. All right, I'm going to be me. We're going to have classic Sid, Pat Tanaka, and Paul Dine. Oh, is that, that that's, who, that's who they squashed. Yeah, you got to get the bad company truck with the hard sock tribute on it. All right, and we are going to take on... Let's see, who's a cool tech? You know, why don't we, I think we're gonna take on the Hardy Brothers, why not? Let's see, what are their outfits? Do they got any cool outfits here? This was when they were brood Hardy. Maybe we take on Edge and Christian. What do you guys think, Dudleys? Who do we take? It's gotta be a tag team. Which uh, which of these teams do you guys like? Which one? Which one should I take on? APA, no, I'm not taking on APA whoops me every time. You stop it, stop it. Okay, I see one for Dudleys. We're doing the Dudleys. I stand more of a chance against the Dudleys. I got to make them alternate costumes where they're wearing the tie-dye. Does he only have the glasses on when he refs? Aw, that's kind of a bummer. Okay, let's go. I think we go blue Dudleys. He also only has the glasses on. Oh, wait, there's one. Oh, you know what? Does he have the last attire? Yeah, glasses, Dudleys. Feels like ECW. You know what? And Sid did uh, Sid did do a handicap match against the Dudleys, so it's perfect. If you get a chance to watch that, Sid squashes both Dudleys at once, gives them a double choke slam. It rules. 
And then Spike comes out, and they, they team up together against him. And uh, no spoilers, but uh, Spike ends up eating a power bomb too. That's just how it goes sometimes. All right, here we go. Let's see our entrance. See if we come out together. Well, we come out separate. That's okay. I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to let these entrances ride. They look great. Oh, see, look at that. That looks so good. Yeah, we did it. Lil Sid approves. And the Dudleys will come out together, of course, because they were, you know, they're actually a team. That, that weird music. Oh, they don't come out together. Some team they are. So they're not even really brothers. Sid, help me. Uncle Sid, help me. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were telling me about uh, seeing that for the first time in the game uh, on Twitter. I, uh, I got to see that in person uh, the first time I saw it. I was at Monster Jam and Gillette and Bad Company was there. I was actually, one thing I think is really interesting about Bad Company, and I've tried to ask the guys and no one has an answer for me, is uh, their logo that appears on the truck, that sort of um, the eyeball in the top hat with wings. If you remove the wings, it's exactly the logo for the band The Residents. And I want to know if that was, like, if they're fans or if it's just... It seems like it wouldn't be coincidence because it's, like, dead on. Like, it's exactly the logo. Ooh. Come on, Sid. Yeah, take them out. Let's go. Sid, help me. Help me. They're beating me up. See, now this was actually a mistake, I think. Yeah, like it feels like it could be like just a reference, you know? Like maybe they're like fans of the band, although that seems unlikely because almost weirdly enough for a band that's been making music for 50 years and has like 90 albums or something insane like that, uh, most people do not know who the residents are. I mean, technically no one knows who the residents are since all the members of the band are anonymous. And they've never revealed themselves, never shown their faces. Um, they're a very obscure, very strange band. If you get the chance to listen to them, uh, they walk the line from creepy and weird music to completely unlistenable music. So it's uh, it's actually a fair bit of work to listen to The Residents. Uh, I've been to see them live a couple times, have have a couple other films on DVD. Like, they're a very interesting group. But, uh, yeah, definitely not for everyone. Love a big man dropkick. We're building to it. We're going to hit that parry go round. I'm telling you, it's coming. Big ol' Falcon Arrow. Did the deal. Started doing the Falcon Arrow after I wrestled Bob Holly, because for a while it was his finish. Oh, we're just about there. Old Pear Bear is about to, about to hit that parry-go-round. Here we go. Is this going to be it? Ah, oh, rope break. Oh, that's another one. Sid, distract him. Sid is not helping me out a ton here. Oh, 
throwing a lot of drop kicks in this match. That's right, just like with CPA. Wait. Uh, so, uh, Utami doesn't do exactly the parry go round as I as I've seen it, because she doesn't do the big release toss. She uh, she does the big spin and then does sort of a splash mountain sit out bomb. Am I am I mistaken about that? Because I know the spin is the same, but when I spin them, I chuck them in the air like a pizza dough and let them kind of spin their way to the ground. I believe she spins and then chucks them over her and catches them in sort of like a Liger bomb. It's a minor difference, but I'll take it because it kind of break my heart if someone that much more popular and famous than me was doing my move. My move. Doing the move that I've co-opted. Okay, yeah, the, so the, she sits out with the Liger Bomb. That's definitely... Oh, that brain... Okay, that that brain buster... Uh, that brain buster on my part and uh, old school power bomb from Sid. That combo is definitely going to be a clip that I, uh, I pull from this. That was sick. Yvonne's in trouble. The old Gorilla Press. When in doubt, old reliable. Yeah, I had some people when I was first doing the parry around ask me why why don't I just uh, finish it finish it with uh, the Liger Bomb, the old Splash Mountain there, and. I'm kind of glad I didn't because it's more unique to do it the way I do it because everyone, you know, I see a lot of people do it the other way. All right, Sid, now would be a great time to do something to distract Bubba Ray. There you go. Off oh, rope break. Come on. I'm so particular with how I want to win these matches. I never do it the easy way. Like, I'm sure it'd be a lot easier to just, like, try to TKO him or something. Yeah, like that. See if he stays down. Oh, tough guy. All right, let's see how he likes two in a row. Still going to get up, tough guy? Yeah, that's right. He's dead. Yeah, he was uh, he was struggling for sure. Hey, hey, don't put me in a Boston Crab. I'm the kind of guy who puts you in a Boston Crab. Let's knock him out again. Boom. Get him, Sid. Yeah, get him. Get him. Get him. That's teamwork. That's just going to show me covering him, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the move, I, I gave him the move way too far in advance for a replay. All right, and I think this is, this is going to be the screen to go out on me and Uncle Sid victorious here. There it is. That's right. Oh, oh, it's over that side. Got that W. All right, uh, and I think with that, we're going to call it a stream for the night, you guys. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out while I, uh, while I took a little time to pay tribute to my, my kayfabe uncle, Uncle Sid. Uh, again, uh, quite a loss to, to have Sid pass away, but, uh, you know, he left, uh, he left quite a legacy in wrestling and certainly made a lot of, uh, uh, had a lot of impact on me, a lot of influence on me. So thanks for coming and hanging out while we did this. 
Uh, tomorrow I'll be playing uh, Wreckfest to get psyched up for the School Bus Demolition Derby that I'm going to this weekend. So I hope to see you all again. Uh, same Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash perryvonvicious, 9 p.m. every Monday and Tuesday. And uh, I'm sure you can all probably guess that on Thursday I'm going to be on here streaming some Monster Jam Showdown. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for hanging out. Take care, everybody.